Streamers based on the Raspberry Pi get more common by the day. And why not? But the quality varies from rather poor to, well, the Magna Mano. The first time I heard of Magna was years ago when they approached me with a modification for the Sonos Connect player. They made improvements to the power supply section and the clock resulting in a new very low jitter SPDIF output for use with an external quality DAC. The Toslink output came to laps. To say I was impressed is an understatement. These guys know digital audio. The company grew and started to import products like the Audio GD DA converters that came with an I2S input. Since they couldn't find a matching streamer, they developed one themselves based on a Raspberry Pi. Again, I hear you think, and for far more money than the Raspberry Pi of course. Yes, but stay tuned for this is a different cookie as the Dutch soccer player Louis van Gaal once said. Let me explain why. Well, Secret is a big word, although owners are discouraged to open the player by a sticker stating that breaking it will void warranty. So let me show you what's inside. In the lower left you find the IEC mains inlet. The review sample was fitted with a Furutec Gold inlet and Hi-Fi Tuning Supreme 3 fuse option. The mains power is then fed to a hefty R-core transformer. This type of transformer is known to pass through very little noise. The use of a transformer also means that on ordering you have to specify whether you need a 115 or 230 volt AC version. The low voltage AC output of the transformer is then sent to the power supply PCB where it is altered into direct current. The combination of the transformer and the power supply electronics, as used here, is called a linear power supply. The output then is fed to a digital I.O. board that is mounted on top of a Raspberry Pi 2B. This board holds the interfacing chips and two Christec clock oscillators, one for 44.1 kHz based and one for 48 kHz based sampling frequencies. Also remarkable are the two piggyback prints that provide locally stabilized voltages to the oscillators and associated chips. From there, the digital signals are sent to the output board that contains both I2S on HDMI and SPDIF on RCA. Soon the Mano player can be optionally fitted with SPDIF on BNC or Toslink. You might wonder why the 2B version of the Raspberry Pi is used and not the 3B. The Raspberry Pi 2B version 1.2 is used and thus has the newest generation chips. The reason that the 3B is not used is because because Wi-Fi inside a metal casing doesn't work and would cause only high frequency noise. There's little to tell about the front. On the left you find the power button and on the right the power indicator in the shape of a blue LED. The front even isn't branded in any way. As far as I'm concerned the power button could have been omitted too. The power consumption is rather low and it keeps the clock oscillator stable if you don't switch off. On the rear there is a branding just above the Raspberry Pi connectors. Four times USB 2 and one APAC for the network. Further to the right there is the HDMI carrying the I2S digital audio signal. So no video and no audio an AV receiver could reproduce. And an SPDIF output on RCA. On the right the IEC power inlet. In this case the bespoke Furutec version as I mentioned before. Since the Mano is Raspberry Pi based, all audio players for the Raspberry Pi that have a driver for the Hi-Fi Berry DigiPlus Pro hardboard can also be used in the Mano. See the Magna website for supported software. The review sample came with PiCore Player LMS installed. This is a squeeze box emulator plus a Logitech media server. The only thing you have to do is hook up a hard disk and have it mounted. Or point a PiCore player to a sh shared volume on the network and you're set. But that's easier said than done. 
I do see a lot of Raspberry Pi music players passing for review and every time again I have to figure out how to set up that software. For someone unexperienced it will even be a lot harder. Therefore Magna takes support very seriously. The Mano comes with a very comprehensive and well written manual in the shape of a PDF. And Magna states that although the Mano is a Raspberry Pi based it is not a DIY product and the user will get full support. If you already have a Logitech Media Server running on the computer on NAS, you can of course switch off the Logitech Media Server on the Mano player and use yours. This might be interesting if you already have one or more Squeezebox products running. The Squeezebox standard has been open from the start and since Logitech has not changed that, there are many open source add-ons to the Squeezebox and thus to the PyCore player, including all kinds of streaming services like Tidal, Cobus, Spotify, Deezer and Soundcloud. The same goes for internet radio and podcast. And of course you can use a smartphone or tablet to select and control the music. Rune users could choose for the Rune Ready software that makes the Mano player a full Rune endpoint. I've tried this too, only to find that it wasn't as stable as the PyCore player yet. The sound quality is excellent though and Magna informed me there will be a stable version even before this video hits YouTube. But using the PyCore player as a Rune endpoint works fine too, since Rune supports the Squeezebox. The only thing you need to do is switch off the Logitech Media Server and activate the Mano player in Rune. As said, you can use other player software but I would consult with Magna if your choice is a good one, both compatibility wise and support wise. The Mano player replaced the SOTM SMS200 with SBoost Linear Power Supply to drive the MyTech Brooklyn in my setup one. Since the SOTM only has USB out and the Mano player only I2 as an SPDIF, you could say it's no fair comparison. But since I have no I2 as input on my DAC, I had to use the SPDIF output on the Mano. From a theoretical standpoint, an async USB connection is easier to do right than an SPDIF connection, since the latter is isochronous. Still, the Mano performed at least as well as the SOTM. People that judge audio equipment using only scopes might be flabbergasted by what I'm about to say. Only people that listen will hear this. For although I have said that the SOTM and the Mano player perform about equal, they don't sound the same. Both are spacious yet precise, but the SOTM has a slightly cleaner high end as where the Mano player has more resolution in the mid and lows. You do need a proper stereo to hear these differences and they might even be partly caused by variations in the quality between the USB and SPDIF inputs on the DAC. To be clear, the SOTM SMS200 was the best networked audio adapter I had ever heard in my setup one until now. I was asked by a viewer if I knew an SMS200 like quality device but with SPDIF out. I didn't, but now I do. According to Magna, the I2S output is even better since conversion from the I2S format that is also used internally to SPDIF always causes some degradation. I have no cause to doubt this. With a base price of 769 euros including 21% VAT, which is about 635 euros excluding the sales tax, it is slightly cheaper than the SMS. 200 with S booster power supply that come together at 814 euros including VAT. The version I reviewed had the Furutech Gold IEC inlet and Hi-Fi tuning Supreme 3 fuse that adds 55 euros to the price making it 824 euros. You could say they cost about the same. The sound difference is small but clearly noticeable on my setup one. Whether you like one over the other I can't say. Actually. I'm still not sure what I would choose if I didn't own the SOTM already. Of course, some may need a USB while others may need a I2S or SPDIF. As far as the flexibility of the software, that is, although not the same, very flexible in both cases. See the review of the SOTM for more details. 
It is funny that 25 years after the introduction of stereo vinyl record players, the medium reached an adult status, if that's a proper English expression. 25 years after the introduction of digital audio, the same started happening. Now, 35 years after the introduction, the sound quality of either the Magna Mano player and the SOTM SMS200 in combination with a good DAC like the MyTech Brooklyn or Chord Hugo is so high we couldn't have imagined, say, 10 years ago. All the more reasons to keep following developments. So stay in contact by subscribing to this channel or my newsletter or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. See the show notes for the links. If you have a question, post it below this video, but please don't ask me for buying advice. See my About Questions video to find out why. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and see super exclusive videos too. Just one dollar a month will do. The link is in the show notes. And don't forget to tell your friends on the web about this channel. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.